All right, we're live. Welcome back to the GoRuck Show. My name is Blaine. I'm Jason. And this week, we are going to talk about Veterans Day and specifically military transition. So we're recording this on November 10th. Tomorrow is Veterans Day, although I think a lot of people are kind of celebrating and recognizing it today because it's a day off from work, which is really what holidays are all about. Isn't that right, Jason? Yeah. I mean, when you're in service, that's what Veterans Day kind of is, right? It's a three-day, four-day weekend. Hang yeah. out with your buddies, drink some beer, barbecue. Maybe someone buys you a beer at, I don't know, Longhorn or Chili's, the Mash House or Applebee's something. The Mash House. Yeah, yes. there you go. There's a, I love that place. There's man. a Fayetteville yeah, special yeah, yeah. for you. So we don't take Veterans Day off here at Go Ruck. It's very clear in the company policy. We do take Labor Day off, though, which I know you have some feelings about that, but maybe we won't get into it. I'm not real big on off days, you know? <laughs> like, if, if you're going to take a day off of, you know, a day off of what, working out or something, go do an, do an active day off. How does that sound? It's kind of like a way, to say, a, a way to say that you don't actually take a day off. So if you were a hardcore exerciser, yeah. like some of our CrossFit athlete friends, would you say that rucking would be good active recovery? Yes. I mean, you've got, I mean, obviously it depends upon the weight and all of that stuff and what you're recovering from. But, you know, swimming and yoga and all of those. I mean, if, if you're thrashed from something that wasn't swimming and you go swim to recover, then guess what? You're fine. You didn't need a full, I mean, don't run seven days a week. That's a good, that's a good thing. If all you do is run, then yeah, you probably need to take some time off from running. Yeah, and if you're like me and a lot of our other neurotic friends that have a hard time not working <laughs> out on a given day, then you know, involve yourself in some active recovery. Veterans right? Day, we gotta stay on point, don't we? All do right. We, do we? It's our show, we can do whatever we want, Jason. <laughs> yeah. So, Veterans Day, we wanted to talk mainly though, or at least start off talking about military transition because that's how you become a veteran, I guess, officially, right? Is that you, you sign up to serve, you join the armed forces, you wear the uniform, you serve, for some period of time, whether it's three years or 30 years, and then you make the transition out of the military and you go from being a service member to a veteran. And that process, while it sounds simple as we talk about it just now, can be a little bit. So, so here's the, first off, the transition sucks. Let's just get that out there. It sucks, but lots of things suck in life, you know? You lose a family member, you, you lose a dog. I mean, things suck and you've got to deal with it. Welcome to life. This is kind of like that. And, and so the special sort of irony in the military transition is that when you get out, you think, oh, life's going to be easier because I don't have to go, you know, dig fighting positions at three in the morning and then get blown out and not, you know, go not get any sleep and still don't eat and priorities of work are never in your favor. Yeah. So, you know, in, then you wake up from not sleeping. <laughs> to have right? your analysis. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, just, you just keep, keep going and, and you're freezing and all of these things di during training. And so at, at the end of your time, when you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, however long you were, you were in, you think, oh, it's gonna be, life's gonna be easier. And, and I, human beings, we are programmed to sit and say easier is, is better. It's just, it's part of what's made us so dominate the food chain is that we always look for, you know, how to, how to make our lives easier. And so the irony though is that the things that you'll, what you'll miss the most is the community, the camaraderie, and what it took to get that community, that camaraderie with the guy to your left and the guy to your right, guys and gals, is the suck. It was the time that you spent doing difficult things aligned in purpose with the, with the people that you come to love to your left and to your right. And so there's no shortcuts to getting that. And as a human being, that's what you, that's what you yearn for. So you're, you're getting out thinking, the, your expectations are not gonna be met because you're thinking easier is gonna be better. And then you realize that it took the suck to get the camaraderie or hopefully at some point realize mm -hmm. that. And so, you know, there's just this big expectation gap, and there you are with some losses of identity and purpose and community. Yeah. And where does that leave you? Yeah, I think that we all told ourselves that lie at one point that getting out was going to be so much better than being in. And in many ways, it can be. It's certainly going to be different. And in, in a lot of facets of your life, it can be better. But in other facets of your life, it may not be, at least for a while. And you know, I, I talked to so many of my soldiers as they were transitioning out, and they all thought like, 
I'm just gonna get an awesome job and I'm not gonna have to get up early anymore and it's all gonna be like Vegas and you know, good times. And like that lasts for about- You wanted to say something way gnarlier, but we'll, we'll give you a pass. <laughs> Hookers and blow. But, but yeah, they all think it's gonna be great and, and it might be for a couple of weeks until it sort of catches up to you and like yeah. your deployment savings runs out and that awesome job you thought you were gonna get doesn't pan out or maybe you get it, but as it turns out, it wasn't so much fun in the first place and you realize things are actually going to be kind of hard and i think for people with families in the military this is especially the case and i know because i was one of those people and your family sacrifices a lot when you're in the military especially if you're deploying a lot you know and you're kind of in the thick of it your family suffers a lot because you're not around to be you know a husband or a parent um they're worried about you because you're like maybe living on some fire base in afghanistan or some you know safe house in Iraq or Syria or something. And so it's tough on them. It takes a big toll and it takes a toll on you as the service member as well, because you're not looking to make life hard for your family. You want to provide for your family and you want life to be good for them. And in many ways, the, the military provides that. In other ways, not so much. So you're thinking, man, things are going to be great. I'm going to be home every day with the kids. I'm going to be able to pick them up from school or whatever. And like that in itself can turn out to be hard even. Oh. Or can you imagine <laughs> the look on your face was so priceless. Just that. <laughs> yeah. So not only is, is that like come hard, Sunday, but it's not Sunday afternoon, I'm like, oh my God, I just cannot wait till Monday. Right. You I mean, know that your wife watches this, right? <laughs> it's not her. It's the kids. She, His wife. She's in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. No. F yeah. Fair enough. So I actually just got a text from my wife of like our daughter in a, in like a playpen fenced off area in the garage so that she could get her workout in. It was just like, just needed a little, a little me time. So, but the point I'm trying to make here is that it's not going to be perfect, and it may be better. Um, the time spent with your family, the the stress that goes away from the constant deployments and the risk and all of that, is there's some upside to that. But if your expectations are that things are going to be just like sunshine and unicorns and rainbows and everything's going to be perfect, you are setting yourself up for a hard transition because you need to have realistic expectations about what it's going to be like. And while it might be better in some ways, it's absolutely going to be hard in other ways. And it's definitely not going to be perfect. Yeah. So I, I was married, but she, when I got out, but M was stationed abroad. And, and so I was kind of, you know, then all of a sudden life got messier and more complex because Murphy always strikes, he's always waiting. So you get out and you have these great plans and nothing goes according to plan. It, it just, one little bad thing leads to other little bad things and then all of a sudden you're just sort of kind of lost. At least that's how I was. And so the three things that I realized that I just had to do to get myself back to sort of being myself with a, a different identity that was sort of buttressed by my service but wasn't dependent on it was I use a GI Bill. So I highly recommend that. The American taxpayers, they they spent a lot to train us and to deploy us and to have us serve them. And, and so, you know, they've also paid for us to have the opportunity to go use that at colleges, universities, other types of schools, do it. It's, you'll get the, the technical skills that you probably don't have unless you go into a very similar field to what your job was in the military. You have a lot of intangible skills leadership and teamwork and mm -hmm. work work ethic and stuff but you know how to work in an office environment and you know spreadsheets or budgets or all that stuff it's it, you can learn that stuff use the GI bill to do it i went to business school and it was a more than anything it was the time that it, it got me to get sort of back on my on my feet um, i had a dog java rest in peace so get a dog because the community part you're gonna find that people, when you get out, are different than the people that you're used to serving with. And it's not to say that people don't exist in the civilian world that exhibit a lot of the same qualities as yeah. the people in the military, but it's just, the military is more uniform like that. And so, you know, a community of two, AKA me and Java, or you and your dog, that's a whole lot better than just you by yourself. And the third, thing is work your ass off. I mean, it, there's really no shortcuts. And so that's what the military is about. You, you work your ass off. You work really hard. 
And, and so that makes it sweeter when you get a four day on Veterans Day or you know, any of the other holidays, frankly. So it's nice to get time off when you're stateside, of course. But those three things, you know, use the GI Bill, get a dog and work your ass off. You'll start to, you'll start to remind you, at least in part, of what made the military great. Yeah, so I'll just reinforce all of those three. I think there are some other things we could add, but I think those, those three are good enough that I just want to reinforce them. So the first one about using the GI Bill, not everyone has it, but if, if you do, absolutely use it because getting education, and not just any education to like bide yourself some time, although the time is nice, like think about what you can actually use and what you can leverage to have some success in the next phase of your life. So this is your opportunity to get some training and some skills and some education that will help you and network and meet the people that can inspire you and, and mm -hmm. encourage you and support you in whatever you're gonna do next. So don't be afraid to take that little bit of time. I would say one caveat to that is, don't be afraid to take a little hit in income and to live a little bit more sparsely. I think a lot of people when they leave the military, you know, the military, for what some people might think, actually pays pretty well. When you take into consideration all the benefits you get, you know, housing and things like that, it's a pretty good paying job for most of us that come from like a blue collar family type of background. And you might need to take some time during your education to like live with a roommate or in a small apartment and not go out a lot, have a crappy car or whatever, so that you can enjoy not having like some of the things that weigh you down in life and just be able to focus on your education and meet great people and prepare for whatever's next. So don't be afraid to take a little bit of a step back financially, be smart about it. Don't just accrue a bunch of debt, but be willing to live to a standard that's not like super fancy just because you feel like you've got to always be advancing. I mean, you've probably lived in less than ideal living conditions in the military. So just take a couple of years and put yourself on deployment if you need to mm -hmm. and just enjoy it because it's probably going to be a, an awesome time. The people you spend it with and the experiences you have are way more important than like your quality of life or standard of living or whatever. So do that. Get your education. I did the same thing. Um, I went back to business school and it's helped me tremendously um, with what I've done since then. The dog piece, I'll just reinforce and say, look, there are some organizations out there that if you're really having a hard time or you want to rescue a dog or whatever, first of all, there are dogs everywhere. There are shelters. There are places to get a dog all over the place. So there's not a huge excuse. But there are great organizations like Pets for Patriots that we support here at GORUCK. Um, Southeastern Guide Dogs, I know, is a great organization, um, which is here in Florida as well. And uh, Companions for Heroes, we have some friends, Dave Sharp, Benjamin Bunn, that work over there. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of, plenty of people that can get you hooked up with a, a companion of some kind to help. Getting a dog isn't, the, dogs cost money, you know? Oh, yeah. So that's a thing. No such thing as a free puppy. Yeah. We, <laughs> it's not we learned that one. Yeah, yeah. But you can get a dog. You can, you can make this happen and it'll work. Yeah. The, and the work your ass off part, I love because you can do that in any facet of life. You can, you can pour yourself into your work, meaning your job. You can pour yourself into your studies. If you're like trying to get a PhD in electrical engineering or something like that, guess what? You're working your ass off. You can pour into helping a buddy's startup get going. You can pour it into your volunteer work. Mm -hmm. You can pour it into your training, like if you want to train for an Ironman or something. There are plenty of things that you can put that on your, you know, kind of on your plate that force you to work your ass off. And like as long as you have that purpose that's driving you forward, like look, there's a lot of ways you can do it. And I'm not here to tell you you have to do it one way or the other. But the work your ass off part, I have found to be when I when I um, was a couple years outside the military and I was going through a divorce and I felt like I was kind of skipping off the bottom, you know, I was like hanging out on the muddy bottom of the river with the catfish and stuff. I, I quit my job in corporate America and I went to work at a startup that my friend had founded and had zero employees. And guess what? That was a lot of work and it was terrifying. But I had something to do every day for a lot more than eight hours a day and that was exactly what I needed. Like there was this, there was this Nonprofit. There was a mission. It was hard. There was like kind of nowhere to go but up in a lot of cases. And I cared about it. My friend had started it and had done a nice job with it. And so if I didn't you have want to no screw employees and no revenue, there, you got really nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> but but that really helped me to flip the switch. Like I worked out every day and I busted my ass then from like 7:30 a.m. until whenever on trying to grow this organization and grow this business and. Um, it meant everything to me to be able to work my ass off. Like I was happy to work my ass off. People was like, hell, it's, thanks for getting back to me so quick over email. Like, no, 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 I'm happy, <laughs> happy to work my ass off. So I would just, I would reinforce those like, three thank points. Thank you for emailing me. Yeah, no, 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 you know? thank you for complaining about something on the website. I'm very happy to work on this. Yeah. yeah. So look, I mean, the transition, it's, it's also completely doable. I mean, so, you know, I, I guess there, there's different perspectives. 
in this. There's the, the veteran perspective, and now we've, we've sort of talked a little bit to our fellow veterans, right? And, and then there's also, as we get to Veterans Day, I mean, America loves her veterans, right? And good on us. We don't spit on soldiers coming home from war anymore. Yep. I mean, it's, try that now sometime. It won't go well for you. And, and good on us. We never, we never say, oh, we've made progress. We've done great. Nobody ever says that about us, right? But let's say it. Like, we've done a really good job of, as a society, separating the, the war fighters from the politicians from the, you know, it's, it's completely yeah. separate. You know, thank you for your service and all of that type of stuff. It's, it rolls off our tongues in, in society and- Almost too easily, right? Almost too easily. Yeah. But, but I would rather have that than, than have there be any kind of a doubt because yeah. I, I really can't imagine fighting a war and not having, especially if I'd been drafted, right? Yeah. And not having the support of people back home. So anyway, We've come a long ways. Now, just sort of transitioning a little bit to different perspectives. You know, there's kind of the veteran to veteran networks and just the way that you would talk to each other. And it's, it's always different. I mean, veterans are a minority of sorts within our society. Yeah. And so, you know, you're, we talk a little bit differently to each other. We're willing to open up a little bit more to each other than we are to strangers or to people who haven't haven't done that that's normal and it's and it's okay which would be true with any walk of life right you're going to feel a little bit more comfortable sharing your yourself and your story with people that you can relate to right? i mean if you if you move to new york from you know jacksonville florida and you're in this big sea of people and all of a sudden you you meet someone from your hometown yeah and it just it's it becomes easier to talk to them about the things that you have in common. Yeah. And so everybody does this. It's just this one has a big label on top of it, the, the veteran label. Yeah. And so, you know, we just have to sort of, it is what it is. And then you, you get, so now we're, we're starting to move into the, the, the dancing around of what, what should civilians do? And, and also what should veterans do in this other type of conversation or communication between veterans and civilians and civilians and veterans. Yeah. And the thank you for your service and you're a hero and all of that stuff. And, you know, there's a movie out called Thank You For Your Service. And I'm kind of, I, I don't yeah. enjoy that you, title very yeah, much. Here's what I love about this <laughs> is that I, I don't know, we don't really know much about that movie and it might be a wonderful film, maybe it even is, but just the title, oh. just, just that, that terminology makes you like vomit a little in your mouth. Yes. I know it does. Yes. And so that's, that's what you're getting at though, which is like this sort of oversimplification of it, which I think is what is a challenge to me because anything at arm's distance is never good enough. That's just my take on things, right? Like, you, you know, if you know someone that loses a loved one and for you to say like thoughts and prayers, not good enough. Like you gotta be willing to get in the, the more uncomfortable stuff with them if you really wanna support them. And I feel like with between veterans and civilians, it's the same kind of dynamic. And I think both parties have a significant obligation uh, or at least responsibility to make it work. And so if you're a civilian and you wanna thank veterans for their service or you wanna you know, feel like you support the troops, which is great, you gotta be willing to sit with them and spend a little bit of time. You know, whether, or it's, whether it's rucking a few miles or sharing a beer or two or whatever the case happens to be, you can't just kind of say, thank you for your service and then run away and feel like you've done your part because you've really not done much other than maybe make them feel a little uncomfortable. Similarly, like if someone loses their dad unexpectedly or something, you don't say like, oh, I'm so sorry, then you skip away in the grocery store. If you really wanna be supportive of them, you, you spend the time with them and you say, hey, how are you doing? That's, that's easy enough. It's an open-ended question. You, it's, it's scary what you might get though. Yeah, because, for, and here's another thing, I don't wanna burst anyone's bubble, but a lot of veterans are doing really freaking well. So tons and tons of veterans have left the service and have had little to no you know, trouble making the transition and are kicking ass and like starting businesses and leading companies and just, you know. Being great Americans. Yeah, being great Americans in general. And so you know, there's really nothing to be afraid of. I think a lot of people are kind of like kid gloving it a little bit because they don't want to like buy someone a beer at Chili's and then sit with them and to drink that beer because for fear that maybe like, 
they're gonna open up and like spill all their emotions on them. Well, for one, most veterans are not just gonna like open up the can of worms and start dumping all. We the don't stuff sit on around you. and hope you're gonna ask us <laughs> oh. if we killed anybody. No, that's not for that's sure. Not sort of probably the opposite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's that. But the other piece is, they might be like just crushing it, and you should probably hear that story too, rather than just assuming that like they're just like a ticking time bomb or they've got some bad story to tell. They might be someone who did six years in the Air Force, two deployments to Kyrgyzstan or whatever, and was a crew chief on an aircraft, dropped supply bundles over Afghanistan, is super proud of what they did, learned a ton, got out, used the GI Bill, and now they're just killing it at you know Amazon or something. Like You probably should hear that story, and you definitely aren't afraid to hear it. So you got to just be willing to go that extra little mile to spend the time, I think. It's, it's nuanced. So what I don't want this to come across as is, don't feel sort of, if you say thank you for your service, it's okay, right? It's okay to say, you know, I don't know what to say when someone loses a loved one either, you know? I mean, I'm thinking about you. I mean, it's sort of one of those, I don't know what to say, but, you know, everybody's got their way to, I don't know what to say, but, their, right? Their go-to. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. you know, it's, it's better than, it's better than actually not, supporting the troops or thank or being thankful for the service of those who have served but our hope is that you know it can turn into to more of a catalyst and less of just hey veterans day is a day to say thank you for your service and post a flag on your facebook account which is awesome do that right post a flag every day that would be awesome you know <laughs> will someone make a commitment every day for the whole year just post a picture of a flag that would be awesome you know then you can have one of those 365 days can be on Veterans Day, and that'll be great. You know? It's the, just, the gauntlet's been thrown so, down. Look at this. I so, like it. So use it as more of, of a catalyst and less of, of, it is important. You know, it's your birthday. It's a, you know, you're turning a whatever age. You reflect back. You think forward. Let's, let's start thinking forward as well. You know? And what are we going to do with this? Yeah, so the, the other piece of this that we didn't hit on a lot is what is the, the responsibility of the veteran? Not just, we talked about veterans communicating with one another and supporting one another, which by the way, there are plenty of veterans out there who are super snarky on the social media and like oh, yeah. are hating on other veterans that are doing really well. Like that's, I think we can clearly say like, stop doing that shit. Like that's, that's silly. If, Do not if, eat your own. Yeah, if, if veterans are getting out of the military and they're crushing it at life, I see this all the time. And I, guys like Vince Vargas and Matt Best and uh, lots of guys that are like, yeah. that are sort of public figures and are just crushing it right now. Nate Boyer. Nate Boyer, yeah, and, and part of the reason that they're doing so well is that they're leveraging their military service and their status as a veteran, like, great. And they, they, you know, they're smart. Good for them, yeah. By the way, all those people, really smart and, and, <laughs> and really hardworking. Yeah. Like, all those guys are working their ass off all the time to be successful, and they didn't just, like, it didn't land in their lap because they posted one video on YouTube and said, hey, I'm a veteran. Like, that is not how that worked. Those are really smart dudes who have been working really hard and have earned every ounce of their success, as have guys like you, by the way. So don't eat, don't eat your own. Be, be happy for those that are succeeding in the, in the veteran space. But you also have some obligation, I think, or responsibility, I don't like the word obligation, um, to help bridge this gap with the civilians yourself. So number, rule number one, Jake Wood, this is for you, don't be a dick. You know, so you're not better than anybody else just because you happen to serve in uniform. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is stop pretending like nobody could ever possibly understand you and your problems because they didn't also serve at Firebase so-and-so in Afghanistan. That's also not true. They don't have to have the exact same shared experience with you to understand you generally. There might be some things you reserve that you talk about with your teammates or with certain you know, friends in the military. That's fine. You don't have to close yourself completely off or think that nobody's worthy of knowing you or hearing any part of your story or they couldn't possibly understand you just because they also didn't carry a rifle. So let some of that stuff go. And I know the military doesn't train you very well to sort of like take your armor off, but like maybe just assume that people have good intentions and give them the benefit of the doubt for like five seconds and do your part as a veteran, as someone who's served and has you know, that leadership and that integrity do your part to shake somebody's hand and talk with them and be a grown up and don't don't feel like they're not allowed to talk to you or they're not allowed to kind of like enter into your space because or or worse that there are lesser americans than you just because they didn't serve there's a lot of ways to be a great american one of them is to join the military and serve mm -hmm. but there are a lot of other other ways too i mean thank you for your service to me as a phrase it it means that 
you, someone has the best of intentions. They, they just sort of, I mean, so can we as veterans answer a little bit more? Like, make them, tell them something. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it was, it was such an honor to get to serve in whatever unit that you were proud to serve in, because I'm sure you are. And, you know, I got to go here and I got to go here, there, and I got to, you know, it, it was just a really amazing experience. And I would encourage you to, you know, I would encourage you to know that I'm doing really well. Imagine that if you are. And like, I, I leveraged all of my, I leveraged my military background. And my favorite line to tell people is, and, and really, I just want to thank you for paying the bills. Because yeah. I got to do a lot of really <laughs> awesome stuff in the military that I would not have been able to do if you would not have been paying those bills. So yeah. thank you. So that's an excellent point, by the way, because one of the things that I wanted to bring up in this conversation is that most people, you could argue that all people, but certainly most people that join the military, they're all doing it voluntarily, first of all, in this day and age anyway. Yeah. So 100% of people that join the military volunteer to do it, you know, which is great that we can still make that happen. But they're joining for a reason, you know, and, and most of them are joining for a better life. And that might mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but like you and I both come from, you know, kind of at least reasonably modest backgrounds. And I, I, I went to West Point primarily because I couldn't afford to go to another tier one college. That's the truth. I could have gone to the University of Florida, which is a great university, on some kind of scholarship probably, and I could have afforded it. But I couldn't afford to go to Duke. I couldn't afford to go to Harvard or any of these places. And even if I could have gotten in, myself and my parents would have been crushed under debt for some number of years afterwards for that opportunity. And the Army, and, and West Point specifically, offered me a chance to get a great education. First person in my family to go to college. It offered me a chance to get a great education to virtually guarantee that I was never going to wonder where my next meal was coming from. Which, when you come from a middle or lower class background, the idea that you can be 18 years old and never wonder where your next meal is going to come from for the rest of your life, that's actually a pretty powerful thing. So I know I personally decided to join the Army because it guaranteed me a better life. And I've had way more opportunities, both while I was serving and certainly since I've served, to do stuff and, and to grow and to achieve things that my parents frankly didn't have the opportunity to achieve because they both grew up on farms. And, and didn't go to college and you know, busted their ass like doing the blue collar life, mowing lawns and cleaning pools and driving trucks and doing whatever they had to do to put food on the table. And a lot of people who serve in the military have a very similar story. You know, we both read Hillbilly Elegy recently mm -hmm. you know, and J.D. Vance, great book by the way, if you haven't read that. Read it, it's Man, awesome. He, he very, very clearly lays out how joining the Marine Corps after high school basically- Saved him. Yeah, and lifted him out of poverty essentially and now he went to Yale Law School and has written a book and has done all these amazing things. He's a great individual, very talented, very hardworking, but him opting to join the military changed everything for him. And I know lots of people, I could name off probably a dozen guys that I know right now that that's, that's the case for. So what we all should remember, both the civilians who are thanking us for our service and the veterans who maybe just use, could use a little bit of perspective is that we joined voluntarily and we joined for a better life and our experiences and our training and our education that we were able to get through the military, while it might have made our transition hard at times, has also given us a great deal and we should be pretty thankful for that and we should leverage that to continue to do good in the world and, and for America after we take the uniform off. For yeah, the last those time. to whom much is given, much is expected. And it, it might sound crazy to say if you've been in the military and served at whatever level that you've been given a lot, but you know, you have been. The taxpayers have spent a pretty penny. A on lot your of ass. money. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah, you've have. been given opportunities to to work together with other people, to accomplish things at a really young age that you just don't get that level of responsibility. In corporate America, it's not gonna happen. So let me let me I'm sorry to interject with the story here, but this is important. I was I left the military, I was 29, 30 years old, 30 years old, I guess. Mm -hmm. And my, my time as a SF detachment commander, my last deployment, I mean, at one point I was like the de facto governor of a district of Afghanistan, right? You've got millions of dollars worth of equipment. You've got like, in some cases, like shoe boxes full of cash. You've got all this crazy stuff that the government has entrusted you with. I got out and I got a job in sales working for a big medical company. And at one point, uh, I remember having a conversation like with my boss's boss about like my prospects for the future for the company. And they're like, you're, you're doing great. I just, I don't know if right now you're ready to lead a, a sales team. And I, and I didn't say anything. I was polite, but I remember thinking like, 
you're not sure if I'm ready to lead a sales team of like 11 people, <laughs> like selling stuff, when I've proven that I'm good at selling stuff. And I was like, when I was 25 years old, I was a scout platoon leader in Baghdad, and I had over 20 people that I was responsible for and ran 200 missions and had, you know, $2.5 million worth of equipment. Like, it blew my mind. But so my opportunities had been amazing to that point. And my ability to grow as a leader had been amazing to that point. And I'm very thankful for those. I also, though, had to check myself and realize that not everybody outside the military recognizes that for a little while. And you can't just get all angry veteran about it. Like, I didn't slam my fists at the, you know, at the Doubletree Hotel in Orlando and be like, you don't fucking get it. Yeah. You know, I was just like, okay, makes sense. And I had to swallow it a little bit. And eventually I've had opportunities to lead organizations and to do some stuff. And that it's worked out fine for me, but it took a little hey, bit of every adjustment. Every time you go somewhere new, you got to pay your dues. That's just how it works. And so the, the good news is, is that you have a lot of intangible skills from the military. And so if you're an employer or you work with someone who is in the military or you were in the military, you're transitioning, this is kind of what I've seen over through myself and, and with working with a lot of veterans and a lot of civilians over the years is that the military folks have all the intangible skills. And if you expect more of them tangibly, then they'll figure out a way if you can help them by mentorship, maybe they go back to school to help themselves, yeah. you know? Um, but it's, it's that gap where you just need the, the tactics of the rest of your, your life, right? You need the, the business skills or whatever the case may be to know how to have a trade and a job. And that's sort of part of the, that's gotta be part of the narrative of the transition. Oh, absolutely. Because you mentioned a lot of the intangible skills. And one of the things I've said about a million times is that I think we, we, we don't oversell, but we talk a lot about qualities that veterans have like respect and integrity and they're prompt and they're hardworking and they're good team players. Yeah, veterans are all those things. But I think what we undersell with veterans in particular is their ingenuity, their creativity. I mean, most veterans, especially those that have been deployed, have figured out ways to like, I mean, I watched my platoon sergeant one time in, in Iraq fix uh, a cooling hose on a Humvee with a with a Mountain Dew can and some hundred mile an hour tape, like hundred mile an hour tape. I mean that stuff. The, yes. the especially having been a scout platoon leader and and having been an SF, like I have seen some of the most creative, intelligent, like their ability to innovate and like just come up with ingenious solutions to things is really amazing. And I think a lot of people out there in the civilian sector, and if you're listening right now, just like try to like pound this into your head. Veterans aren't just like prompt and disciplined and good team players. Many of them are incredibly creative and have amazing abilities to think outside the box. Like we think because we're just like wearing a uniform that we're all very uniform, but that's not true. Veterans are a very diverse group and many of them are unbelievable at thinking outside the box and coming up with solutions to problems that look, no one else is gonna solve right now in this neighborhood in Baghdad, so I'll just come up with a creative solution Life to solve it. Life or death you know? is a really powerful motivator. Necessity is the mother of all invention, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and soldiers who have been deployed have had a lot of necessities that they've had to just figure out. So I think that's worth, worth really highlighting there. Yeah. All right, what else? What else? Questions? Questions? Yeah, Lee? Bomber is in New York City this week, hanging out on a boondoggle with Lindsay at the Veterans Day Parade tomorrow? Yes. Thank you, New by York the way. City. New York yeah. City Veterans Day Parade, thank you. We've got a, like 200 GRTs That's in the awesome. parade tomorrow along with a ton of folks from Team Red, White, and Blue, awesome. which is gonna be really cool. We've got Lindsay up there taking a bunch of rad pictures and Bomber up there just doing Mark what Bomber Otto. does. Awesome. Mark Otto, yeah. Dude, if you're watching right now. Shout out. Yeah, you're officially the best. Keep it up. So we, we appreciate it. So that's a really good example of a veteran. Yeah. Got out, done lots of cool stuff. Stock exchange, you know, started his own little Nonprofit to get, you know, he just wants to help other veterans and help build a bridge between the military and the civilian world. So there's, there's guys out there, guys and gals out there doing this. And it's, it's you know, nobody ever, nobody ever tells those stories enough. It's, or the times that we do tell the stories, there was also a great feature on ESPN today. Earl Granville was in it with, um, he's a longtime GRT amputee who lost his, his brother, also a, a, a veteran, to suicide. And, you know, I, I know Earl, I've, 
he's done an event with, or he's been in an event and been around DC a bunch, and he's just an awesome guy. And so watch the feature on ESPN. He went up and, you know, there was a, a high school girl that wanted to go ruck 22, or hike. hike. Hiking is just rucking in the mountains. So she wanted to go ruck 22 mountain tops in honor of 22 veterans a day and stuff like that. Look, all of this stuff is awesome, right? I mean, remember, remember and honor the fallen and try to inspire change and all of that stuff. I just, I don't want, and this is the nuance, this is the nuance of sure. this discussion. I don't want to just have those discussions though about how this many, this number of veterans kill themselves, and they do, and it's in each one is, is one too many. I don't want to just have the conversations, though, about the veterans who are, you know, have PTSD and can't function or, you know, all of those types of bad stories. Sure. So that's an important part, but we also need to, to remember there's a lot of veterans out there who are kind of quietly, because it's more in our nature than not to to say, I don't really want to draw a lot of attention to the fact that, you know, I mean, I, I always feel conflicted, right? I mean, I, I'm really happy to talk about my service in the hopes that it will inspire both a perspective change of everyone that listens in terms of military and civilian, but I don't really, I mean, I would also be fine, you know, c deleting all my social media stuff and just living a really happy life with my family in no small part due to the fact that because of my military service, I have a lot of perspective. And so there's just a lot. I mean, I don't think you might hear some simple sort of answers. Thank you for your service. There's heroes and all of those types of things. Everything is a lot more nuanced. And ultimately, you know, if, if you have the opportunity to, to spend time around a veteran or it, as with the rest of life, it's always about people. If you can connect with them on a human level, then... The, you know, then you become friends. Friends are more comfortable, comfortable talking with their friends about stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's nuanced. So what you're but Blaine, I just want to say thank you for your service. Hey, thank you. <laughs> what, uh, what you're saying, though, I think, is that veterans are people, right? And, like, people are complex. People are diverse. Any subset of people, black, white, brown, veteran, you know, male, female, they're people. And so there's no easy way to describe any subset of people. They're all unique. They're all different. You know, they're all kind of special in their own way. And it's lazy, just so lazy to describe any group of people as one way or another. And so veterans are just, they're just people. You know, they have, you know, they might like the same kind of music as you. They might be from the same hometown as you. They might have the same kind of interests. You know, not every veteran is a hero. Here's the thing. Some veterans are knuckleheads. Like I had lots of them when I was a lieutenant that I had to go to night court with the battalion commander all the time because some of these guys were knuckleheads when they showed up. They were knuckleheads while they served, and they're, now they're probably out, and they're probably still knuckleheads. I don't know. If anything, they're better for having served. I'm sure they are. You know, than before. So it's, it is just such a broad group of people with so many you know, nuanced parts of it that the only way you can do it right is to get to know them, as with all people. Yeah, and I think that's a good. So I'm not saying don't buy him a beer. This is public service announcement. If someone's you can out buy there, me a beer anytime. I'm you know they're a veteran. Either. You can buy them a beer. They will thank you, right? If you're a veteran, don't let me down. Say thank you. Someone buys you a beer, right? But you know, I mean, it's it's complex. So look, the best of intentions are the best of intentions. Just the hope is that you you do something with that if you're a civilian. And on on the veteran side, make it easy. Make it easier for the people. Yeah. Cut, cut them a break. You know, I've been in that mindset of n nobody's going to, you know, nobody's going to be able to relate to me that, that wasn't there, you know? And it, it's just not true. There's an art to time and some stuff I'm a lot more protective about and other stuff, you know, I'm really happy to, to share and discuss as openly and honestly, honestly and as brutally as possible, right? But, you know, we've all got our little things. You know, you said... You got a couple things. You, it's between you, God, and the and the guys on your team. Yeah. You know, just whatever mountains, wherever that was, and you know that's just a fact of life. Yeah. But so. I've I've shared a lot of my story and my service yeah. with a lot of people at this point. Just not every single detail with it. You mm -hmm. know, that's just speaking of free beer, by the way. <laughs> the rep, the beer rep from Genesee Beer for my Central New York friends, you'll recognize this. The oldest brewery in New York. He dropped by twelve cases of uh, Genesee. Beer. That's awesome. And uh, 
as well as the cream ale, which is delicious too, by the way. So thanks. It's not going to supplant Budweiser probably anytime soon, but do, do they sell it here? I think they just started selling it in the Jack's oh, area. Really? Yeah, Genesee beer. So huh. well, I, I do want to say thanks. 12 cases of beer is a pretty nice gesture. Yeah. I think 12, ca 12 cases of beer. What's, okay. what's the math? Is that 288 beers? Yeah. That's a lot of free beers. So I, you know, if you drop off 288 free beers at the Go Ruck PX, you then, will definitely get a shout out. Then you get a shout out. It's not a, they don't make a tall boy version of it, I don't think yet, but. Keep it simple, stupid, you know? Yeah. Laugh in public. That's true. Said yeah. He, you know what? He acted. No, no, he memorized it. He memorized it. It's written it. on the whiteboard over he here. He memorized so. it, and he knew. It's actually not on the whiteboard. <laughs> but he knew what that was, and he was waiting for this oh. moment. And he knew someone was going to say, probably me, never do math in public. And the good news is, is that he didn't. He had it memorized. Good on you, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Lee. All right, question. So we got talk, a let's talk questions. Some related to Veterans Day, a couple not. Um, kind of talking about your interactions with civilians or kind of the guys on your team. Do you guys have a Veterans Day memory that sticks out in your mind as to just like, oh, that was awesome? A Veterans Day memory? Yeah, just maybe an interaction, maybe just hanging with your boys, maybe just someone stood out in your mind. A Veterans Day reaction that was awesome or memorable. Uh, I mean, really, to be Frank, I mean, since I got out, at least for the last few years, Veterans Day has been a, a big Go Ruck event, and it's been, you know, uh, a weekend where we're able to very tangibly build that bridge between the military and the civilian world. It's a, it's a passion of ours, and and so that's been kind of my focus. I, I it, when I was in the service, Veterans Day was just kind of a a weekend off if I was. Yeah. Not in wherever, which I probably I don't remember one Veterans Day in my military service. So let me just put that really yeah, simply. I don't either. So one of them I was at selection, one of them I was in Sears School. I know that for sure. Yeah. Spent <laughs> two Thanksgivings in a row. One of them I was in, in uh, selection. The next Thanksgiving I was in Sears School. So yeah. which is my favorite holiday. So that was yeah. that was a rough rough couple of years. So. I, I'm a little opposite. The last five years working at Team RWB, I've had more Veterans Day, like phenomenal off the charts Veterans Day memories than I could possibly even sort out. Like to the point we were talking about before we started the show, like I almost was getting a little bit like, jaded is the wrong word, but I, I had lost perspective and appreciation a little bit kind of toward the end because I was like, afforded the opportunity to like go to amazing concerts and like go to the White House and the end of the Old Glory Relay was on Veterans Day, you know, for all these years. So I have been fortunate beyond belief on Veterans Day to have witnessed amazing like feats of teamwork and we, we had the big concert on the mall in DC the one year the day before Veterans Day like Metallica was there and Eminem and like it was Bruce Springsteen and awesome. Dave Grohl so I, I was afforded <laughs> hundreds of amazing opportunities over Veterans Day the last five years that it's a little weird this year, like to be here at home in Jack's Beach and like be working at Go Ruck every day and not flying all over the country for events and stuff on Veterans Day. So I'm pumped to be here with my family on Veterans Day for a change and to be here at HQ on, a, on an event weekend and see some people coming in and like we'll do our best. This has been not the most grand, but I've you know the boys are in town, so it's awesome. Got the whole family together, so it's going to be low key. They but can it's all say be, thank you for your service. Huh? Yeah. That's the, that's the greatest thanks of all, right? <laughs> my kids don't give it. My kids think I'm the least cool guy in the world. You know, you know, here's, so totally off subject, but sort of. The fact that I was a Green Beret, the fact that I did anything, like, with my professional career, the kids are like, they're oblivious. Like, they think Go Ruck's cool, but they're like, man, they're like BD. It's like, can we go hang out with Big Daddy? Like, that's all they know, <laughs> right? But we were, we were, last summer, we were in Maine at a, a cabin on the lake, and the cabin had an old school Nintendo like the original Nintendo, oh, right? Oh, awesome. And it had an old like tube TV that was like three feet deep, you I know? I beat Mario, Super, or was it Super Mario Brothers? Yeah, I beat that on oh, my yeah. original Nintendo. Good for you, thank the you for wires, your The wires, <laughs> yeah. the wires in the back got messed up and Nintendo had to sort of prop it up on something. Oh yeah, you gotta like sure push the, the disc down there and like blow yeah. on and all that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. so, so I became a hero to my children last summer in Maine with this Nintendo because not only was I able to do all the tricks to make it work, you mm -hmm. know, blow in the cartridge, stack a cartridge on top of it, the whole thing, That's right? That's awesome. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. So I was able to make it work, which they were pumped that we had video games at the lake, because we had like no internet, no TV, yeah. like any of that, I don't say. Yeah. So we've got the Nintendo going, and then we had Mike Tyson Punch-Out and Super Mario, yeah. and some old school games, and 
I'm not a big video game guy. Like we don't have a game system in my house or whatever. So the kids think I don't, I don't play video games. And they kept getting stuck on like certain competitors that Mike Tyson punch out or they get stuck on a level at Mario. I'm like, just give me a controller. And I was just crushing it for them. And they were like, their eyes were this big. They're like, <laughs> did you know dad can play video games? <laughs> and they were like total respect. They're like, dad, you're the yeah. best. Like I could have jumped in the lake and caught a bass in my teeth. And they would have been like, meh. <laughs> but the fact that I could beat Mike Tyson on Mike Tyson punch out blew their mind. So yeah, that's kids, awesome. kids are good in that, in that way. Like they remind, they put you in your place. They remind you like, Oh, oh you can, do. you can power clean 300 pounds. Good for you. Can you yeah. beat Mario level eight? Like my kids are a little more basic. It's sort of, you know, they cry until I change their diaper, you know, and I know how to do that reasonably well. And they don't so thank you for that at all. They don't thank me they for just, that at they all. They squirm and fight. You know? Yeah. Yeah. They just run around and act crazy. Um, so in regards to, you were speaking about the challenge and how this just started go rock, you've just been trying to build, build, build on Veterans Day weekend. Um, what can people expect differently from a Veterans Day challenge than they would a normal challenge? Oh. How is the Veterans Day challenge different than a normal So there's challenge? the highlight of, of a veteran who served. You either can bring someone else's story or, you know, it's just, what, what, what we want to do is, is honor service. And so we do that in different ways with, with different themed events. But when it comes to Veterans Day, we, we want to you know, not honor it in a way where we just say, thank you for your service, and I love all the veterans. That, that's awesome. I do too. By the way, anyone who's served, you know, thank you for your service. <laughs> right? But it, it's more, sometimes you need a face. And so, sure, your, your cadre is a veteran. That's awesome. You will almost definitely have other veterans in the class. And, you know, it, it's just, it's a themed event that focuses on military service and what that means. And I, my best guess is what you're gonna find out. There's, there's, there's always a couple sad stories. I mean, the roots of Veterans Day are a little bit intertwined with the remembrance of those who died in World War I. But, you know, we've sort, of, day. Yeah, we've sort of separated out Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Memorial Day honoring those who, who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Veterans Day honoring those who have served. And so we, we take the service approach to, to this one and just honoring service. So you'll hear stories that are related to that. What else, Lee? Um, last but not least, this one's coming from one Mr. Christopher Goad. He just wants to know if there are any maybe birthday wishes that you'd like to throw out before you wrap it up for the weekend. Birthday wishes before Actually, wrap it up. Actually, nobody I like has a birthday today. That's a right? fact. It's sad. <laughs> Although I didn't check my like Facebook. Although there is uh, the whole thing, Semper so. Fi thing, you know. Occasionally, occasionally those guys are okay, you know. Except for Bomber, he's a terrible, <laughs> terrible person. Let me think. All the Marines I don't like. They're all the ones I know. So we've got Bomber, Big Daddy, Wow, Mickey, Mickey oh, Banks. Oh, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm just kidding. We love you guys. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to, to meet right there. Oh, yeah. Big Nick's birthday is mine. Big Nick's birthday. It's awesome. Yeah. Everybody wish Nick a happy birthday. Yeah. yeah, happy birthday to the Marine Corps. I love, love Marines. But, you know, the Marine Corps and the Army and the Navy and all that, it's kind of like, you know, I can punch my brother, but you can't. Absolutely. And I feel that way about all of our <laughs> brother and sister services. I yeah. mean, I had the opportunity to serve alongside some Marines, uh, both in Iraq and Afghanistan, and as well as with, with the Navy, with DOD guys and the SEALs. I mean, I, I'll, I'll let you on a little hint here. The Taliban doesn't care whether you're Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. They, they don't care at all. Seven, no. 762 by 39 flies just as straight, whether you're a Marine, a soldier, a sailor, or whatever. So. When, uh, when it matters most, we're all very much the same. So. I got to work with the Marines a little bit in, in Africa. It, it's awesome, you know? It's also cool to be able to sort of jab your brother a little bit, you know? So, do we do that around here? Like we give little. each other shit sometimes? Just a little. <laughs> all right, well, happy birthday, Marines. Happy Veterans Day. Yeah, and to everyone, everyone out there, thank you for your service. Thank you for watching the <laughs> Go Ruck Show.